Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Jesper. This video will be an overview of the swelling and hematomas that frequently can be seen in newborns after a birth trauma. This video is intended to help understand, differentiating and memorizing these three swellings. I will first explain each of them individually and then after that we will simplify each of them and use some memorization rules so that we can remember it for the future. We will start with caput succedaneum. Caput succedaneum is a process where there can be edema and swelling on the scalp of the newborn and it usually is after some pressure from the birth canal during the birth process. This swelling happens between the skin and the periosteum. So it happens on top of the periosteum, between the periosteum and the skin. It is the most superficial swelling out of all the ones we're going to talk about. And unlike the next two, there is edema in caput succedaneum, not pooled up blood. The edema to swelling can also overlap suture lines of the skull of the newborn. Important to note here is that caput succedaneum is self-limited, meaning it disappears within two to three days. It is the least severe from the three. It's important to differentiate between caput succedaneum and cephalohematoma. So cephalohematoma is going to be the next swelling that we will talk about. Cephalohematoma is a collection of blood under the periosteum. So instead of edema, it is now a collection of blood that we're talking about and it lies under the periosteum rather than above. A key to differentiating it is that in a cephalohematoma, the pooled up blood do not cross the sagittal suture line on top of the fetal head, so it's often going to be seen on only one side. Another key difference is that a cephalohematoma tends to get worse and increase in size during the first day, and it does not resolve within two to three days. It can actually stay for weeks to even months. With a cephalohematoma, there's also a risk of an infection occurring and spreading from the pooled up blood. So it is important to monitor the baby. Other complications like jaundice, anemia or calcifications is possible. Hence the differentiation is important and that's why it's more serious than a caput succedaneum but also a cephalohematoma can spontaneously resolve by itself. The last and the most serious hematoma we will mention is the subgaleal hematoma. This is a collection of blood under the galleal aponeurosis, but it's over the periosteum. It is considered to have a higher risk of being dangerous than a cephalohematoma, so it is a more serious condition requiring emergency treatment. The subgaleal hematoma is the rarest one and it is caused by the emissary veins rupturing. The emissary veins are basically the connection between the dural sinuses and the scalp veins. And these emissary veins will rupture in a galleal hematoma. It is not bound by suture lines, so it can also overlap the sagittal suture. This type of bleeding needs to be treated in the emergency room and restoring of blood volume and monitoring is very important. Potentially a surgery might be done to prevent internal bleeding. Okay, so those were the three swellings. Let's simplify and memorize these easily. Starting with the least severe one, caput succedaneum. So here I think CS and the S is the key to memorizing it because it's superficial, it's located right under the skin, and it's self-limited. It's generally also safe. And it can cross the suture. So the next one is the cephalohematoma. Here I think HP. So there is an H and a P. And HP is the key. When I think HP, I think of health points from video games. H for hematoma, it's a collection of blood. That's what hematoma means. So cephalo, hematoma, collection of blood. Also age for half line, since it does not cross the sagittal suture, it remains on its side, so it remains on the half line. P is for periosteum, since the collection of blood is under the periosteum rather than above. 
So it's a collection of blood under the periosteum that does not cross the suture. Cephalohematoma. Just remember the H and the P. All right, so the last one, subgaleal hemorrhage. Okay, so here the name kind of gives us help. It's a collection of blood under the galeal aponeurosis, so subgaleal, but over the periosteum. So I think galeal, Goliath, so Galil kind of sounds like Goliath. And you know, the giant who fights David in the Bible, like David and Goliath. So Galil or Goliath is bigger, it's more dangerous, and can definitely cross sutured lines. It's a bit of a stupid mnemonic, but hey, maybe it helps. So now we remember subgaleal hemorrhage is the worst out of the three. It's located subgaleally, so under the Galil aponeurosis. Alright, so that's it. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it helps you to remember these three swellings for the future. It's important. And if you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment on what you would like us to do for a video next, feel free to do that. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.